OpenAI started as open source and non-profit, yet today OpenAI is closed source for-profit company. Now how did this happen? What's the reason behind this controversial shift? And why did Elon Musk, one of the founders, leave the company? My name is David Andre and this is the untold story of OpenAI. The company was created in 2015 and there are a lot of co-founders, but the five most important ones are Elon Musk, Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, Ilya Satskever and Andre Karpathy. The company started with $1 billion worth of funding and it came from people like Peter Thiel, Reid Hoffman, Elon Musk, Sam Altman, but also companies like Amazon Web Services. Now as you can see there were a lot of people involved in OpenAI's creation, but who was the most important one? Well this is what Elon thinks. I am the reason OpenAI exists. How much money did you give them? I'm not sure the exact number, but it's some, some number on the order of $50 million. The final straw was Larry calling me a specious for being pro-human consciousness <laughs> oh, instead of <laughs> machine consciousness. And I'm like, well, yes, I guess I am. So why was OpenAI even created? What was the mission of the company? I think the best answer to that is to look at the very first article on their website. Introducing OpenAI. OpenAI is a non-profit artificial intelligence research company. Our goal is to advance digital intelligence in the way that is most likely to benefit humanity as a whole. Now here is the important part. Unconstrained by a need to generate financial return. Yeah, that didn't age well. To put it simply, OpenAI was created to make sure that AI doesn't wipe us all out. But there was a second reason. Back then, Google had a virtual monopoly on all AI talent. They controlled something like 75% of all AI researchers, which is absolutely unheard of. When OpenAI was created, it did shift things from a unipolar world where Google and DeepMind controlled, you know, like I said, three quarters of all AI talent. Even though OpenAI started with a billion dollars, that proved not to be enough. And soon the company started running into a bunch of issues. But the two most significant problems were securing more funding and acquiring talent. Remember, the company was still a non-profit at that time. So convincing investors to give you money when they can't generate a return is very difficult. Especially when you're in a super expensive industry, such as AI that requires data storage, computing power, expensive engineers. Yeah, that's the second problem. Expensive and great talent. Because OpenAI had to compete with Google and Google has billions, billions of dollars, which means they can also offer much better salaries than a simple non-profit startup. As a result, OpenAI was forced to pay competitive salaries, which means the funding issue got even worse. Now, one of the most pivotal moments in OpenAI's history is when Elon Musk left the company. The official reason is that Elon wanted to avoid conflict of interest, since Tesla is also working on their own AI systems, meaning if he was on the board of OpenAI as well as being the CEO of Tesla, that could cause some problems. But the unofficial reason, well, there's a bunch of those. Some people speculate that Elon wanted to be the CEO of OpenAI and when he didn't get his way, he decided to leave. Others say that it's because of some feud between Sam Altman and Elon Musk, which eventually caused their relationships to deteriorate and cause conflict within the company. But honestly, the most realistic explanation is that Elon was just overloaded with a bunch of responsibilities from Tesla, SpaceX, the boring company, SolarCity, like the guy is doing everything and actively participating in yet another company, maybe that was just too much. Soon after Elon left, OpenAI made the decision to become a for-profit company, which makes it seem like Elon was the main reason why OpenAI was was non-profit in the first place. Right after OpenAI stopped being a non-profit organization, Microsoft came knocking with a $1 billion investment. Now, why is it even an issue that OpenAI is no longer a non-profit? Well, think about it like this. If OpenAI actually manages to create AGI or a super intelligent artificial being, then that will create billions, if not trillions of dollars worth of value for the company. Now, if it is a non-profit, that's not an issue because it's doing all of that for the good of humanity. But when it is a for-profit, all of that money will go straight to investors. To be fair, OpenAI isn't a completely for-profit company. It has a unique corporate structure, which is called a capped profit, meaning that the investors can only earn a capped amount. But in this case, it's 100x the investment. Now, I don't know about you, but I think the reason for a capped profit is to discourage or deter money-hungry people. But 100x return isn't deterring anyone. The 
Despite all the controversy, the original $1 billion investment from Microsoft was absolutely huge. It showed that Microsoft had a serious level of confidence in OpenAI and that it believed that this little team, which was at the time only a couple hundred people, maybe even less than 100, could actually achieve the ambitious goal of creating an AGI. But this investment wasn't just financial, it was very strategic, both for Microsoft, who increased its presence in the AI space, and for OpenAI, who got access to Microsoft Azure, the supercomputers from Microsoft. However, the investment also came with some downsides. Microsoft started to influence OpenAI's strategy. The investment began to shift OpenAI's approach from being a purely research lab to starting to focus more and more on commercial products. Another huge downside of Microsoft's involvement was the controversial reactions from the AI community. This sparked debates about the ethics of proprietary AI and the concentration of power in the hands of the few. Just imagine if they actually create AGI. Who is in control? Is it Sam Altman? Is it Greg Brockman? Or is it Satya from Microsoft? Either way, it's not the humanity and the general public who has to decide. It's a bunch of people who will have incredible power. Okay, so that was the switch from non-profit to for-profit. But when did the company become closed to Source, because if you remember, the company was open source, like it's even in the name, open AI. So what happened there? Now it's important to understand what open source even means. Open source is a term used to describe something, usually a software, that is freely available for everyone to modify, use and distribute. Imagine a cooking recipe. Not only can you use that recipe, you can also tweak it and share that tweak version with anyone without worrying about legal implications. That's exactly how open source software where it works. When OpenAI created GPT-1, its very first language model, it was completely open source. Everything was publicly available, including the source code and even the model weights. But something happened with the release of GPT-2. See, the switch to closed source was much more sneaky than the switch to for-profit. When GPT-2 was released, it wasn't publicly available, until many months later, when OpenAI decided that it was finally safe to release. However, However, it was the release of GPT-3 when things started to get really weird. In 2022, OpenAI granted Microsoft exclusive licensing. Thus, Microsoft had access to GPT-3's underlying model and no open source code or model weights were ever released to the public. This also marked OpenAI's first commercial product, the GPT-3 API. This was a massive change from OpenAI's previous statement, which said that they weren't focused on commercial products. In Instead, they were just a research lab. Okay, so why is closed source an issue? Well, first off, the company is named OpenAI, which is now very misleading. And it makes a lot of people feel like the company is still open source when that's definitely not the case. But the bigger issue is that nobody can see inside of a closed source company. Meaning that if the AI is really sentient or conscious, or if they actually have AGI, nobody will know until OpenAI does something with it or until the AGI decides to do something itself. All right, let's put all of the public backlash aside. How did the partnership with Microsoft actually impact OpenAI? Well, I think there are five big changes that happened. Number one, OpenAI started to shift towards commercialization because the company was bleeding money left and right. Number two, the partnership greatly amplified OpenAI's resources. Like imagine going from a new startup to having the access to trillion dollar companies' supercomputers. Like that has to be insane. Number three, OpenAI could use Microsoft's infrastructure to make all of their products safer and more robust, mitigating potential misuse while at the same time making it more accessible to other organizations and small businesses. Number four, the two companies started doing exclusive deals. For example, when Microsoft wanted to create Copilot, which is a coding assistant built on top of GitHub, and yeah, Microsoft also owns GitHub. And number five, this partnership gave OpenAI massive credibility and reputation boost. Since since before it was just a small AI startup, but now it is partnered with Microsoft, one of the biggest companies in the world. Overall, working with Microsoft had a massively positive effect on OpenAI's growth. The question is, at what cost? And we might have gotten the answer earlier this year, when Microsoft invested another 
10 billion into OpenAI, which means that Microsoft now owns 49% of OpenAI and it receives 75% of all profits that OpenAI makes until all of the investments are repaid in full. On top of that, OpenAI is paying Microsoft for the use of Microsoft Azure. Honestly, this was a genius business move by Satya Nadella. But what's even crazier is that Microsoft has access to all of OpenAI's models, code and weights, meaning they could effectively cut them off at any point. I mean, Microsoft, ha as part of the Microsoft investment, they have uh, rights to all of the software, all of the model weights, and everything necessary to run the inference system. Now, if you'd like me to interview people like Sam Altman or Emad Mostak, then follow me on Twitter. That way I can actually get in contact with them because right now I have like 12 followers. The link is in the description.